Thank you, music team, for leading us in worship. Good morning, everyone. I didn't do this in the first service, but I was asked by the fellow elders to update you briefly about what happened to our family recently. On the 23rd of June, my wife, Wani, had a hemorrhagic uh, stroke and was in the hospital maybe 22, 24 days. And uh, I thought initially she couldn't make it. Uh, it was a hemorrhagic one. But praise the Lord, she's back now uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago on the 14th or 15th of uh, July. And she's able to walk, to cook, to speak. And we went to... Uh, a, we went to see the doctor uh, one, one Monday ago, and the doctor didn't say to us initially when we uh, went to the hospital, maybe for a psychological reason, but he said that actually based on the amount of the blood in her brain, I don't expect her to speak by now, but he's able to communicate and to speak. Praise the Lord. We are humble and thankful for the <laughs> tremendous support and prayers and love that we receive, that is, we didn't expect uh, that of the family here. Uh, people come to us to visit, to pray, to support, and uh, we hope to write down something later on to really update you. Uh, she doesn't come today. Uh, she needs to gain more confidence to be able to be surrounded by many people, but thank you so much uh, once again for that. Um, I came to the Lord um, in 1994 when I was in grade 11. Uh, one of my friends asked me to join a Christian fellowship where I gave my life. But I will say that I didn't have good mentors around the time to really invest their lives into me. I kind of just watched uh, people from distance and try to emulate that. And sometimes I, uh, I was disappointed by the end of their lives. And then uh, also I had some mentors in the, uh, in the area of academic, but it's purely knowledge. Until I came to GICF some time ago, and I was privileged to join the elders meeting uh, for many hours every week and uh, watch our senior elders, uh, Mike and uh, Pastor Parno, uh, Hendra, who was talking about uh, mentoring uh, a few weeks ago, and I've learned a lot from them. So if you see, I have lots of shortcomings and problems. These are from them as well. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's uh, just joking. Uh, uh, if you still have problems, that is left with me, but I've uh, learned a lot uh, from them as well. Uh, but I also a uh, privilege to let me in 2010 to uh, meet with this guy, uh, the two guys, but on your left hand side this is my red right hand side. His name is John Bond. He goes by JB. And then after we travel, people ask. Are you the family or relative of James Bond? Uh, he said, uh, no, uh, I am uh, 003, because I'm only licensed to preach life and not to kill. <laughs> yeah, so that's, um, uh, he's a pastor of a large church in Perth, Western Australia. Uh, it's quite large church nearby Curtin University. And he offered to be my mentor from 2010 and we traveled together from the city nearby the border with Aceh in the north of Sumatra all the way to the border with Papua New Guinea at the right end in the eastern part of the country. We spent lots of time together traveling on the plane, the train, the carts, and he has been teaching me lots of things as well and fasting. Again, if there are lots of problems that I have, that is with me, that is not uh, uh, from him. When we met first, I called him Pastor John. Now I just call him mate. 
that is OC way to say, hey mate. And uh, he is uh, he's, uh, on the board of directors of uh, Compassion Australia as well. He's a very respected pastor. And uh, when he grows his church to a large church in Perth, he steps aside and gave the opportunity to the younger people that he mentored to be the senior pastor right now. He's of, of my age. Later on, I will, uh, I will share more about the journey of mentorship. Hope to, uh, to bless you as well. Now, biblical mentorship is, is a multi-faceted. Uh, two Sundays ago, we uh, heard from Pahendra about Jesus as our perfect mentor. He mentors his disciples. And then he gave lots of examples from his life being mentor and also mentor many people as well. I hope that will inspire you uh, to be mentor or to be mentored by someone else. Last week, we heard from John about uh, how that's going to take place. Better is in the family of God, in the church, where different groups of people we mentor. Older women mentoring younger women, older men younger uh, mentoring a younger women around the gospel. Still in the same tone, I will uh, talk today uh, today about mentorship is empowering people to reach their full potential for the kingdom of God. Now, because he, this man, John Bond, poured his life to us, and I've been blessed by that uh, also now, uh, we have the pictures on that part. Uh, Warni and me, also, we make decisions to pour out our lives to mentor many uh, young people as well. Some of them uh, on these pictures I will share as we uh, go. Uh, so empowering people to reach their full potential for the kingdom of God. And this demonstrated by Paul to Timothy, Titus, Silas, and many other people. And you might ask the question, these are full-time, so-called full-time, but actually the principles here uh, can be applied for everyone, whether you are full-time or you are full-heart, every Christian uh, uh, will be uh, benefiting from this. We are going to learn from uh, 2 Timothy 1, uh, 1 to 18. I will read for you. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God for myself as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in you, in your grandmother Louise, and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, uh, his prisoner. But join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us from and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am, and I'm not ashamed because I know whom I have believed. And I'm convinced that he is able to guard what have 
and trust it to him until that day. What you have heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. God, the good deposit that was entrusted to you, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Figilus and Hermogenes. May the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, we have, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much always for the privilege to be able to worship together and to listen to your word. We believe your word is living and active. And as we listen, we pray that it will challenge our thinking, challenge our hearts, challenge our will, our desires, uh, to love you more. And out of this love, uh, shall we have desires to follow you in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. To Timothy was the last letter brought by Paul to his spiritual son, uh, uh, Timothy. And if you know that your days are numbered, is coming to an end, you would like to pour out your heart, your thinking to someone you love the most. And this is the letter that Paul wrote from Rome at the end of uh, his life. And uh, in the line of talking about mentorship, I would like to uh, uh, talk about a uh, few things from this passage and also other things based on the experience of Paul and Barnabas. We are going to talk about what is it. I hope this is on the screen. Okay. Uh, uh, why biblical mentorship? How to do it? Uh, are there challenges and setbacks in doing that? And, uh, of course, we don't want to finish out with uh, failures. We want to finish with the fruits and joys of doing this in our Christian life. I'll take the definitions from Paul Stanley and Robert Clinton. These are the navigators. If you don't know, the navigators ministry is well known for their one-on-one uh, discipleship, one-on-one uh, mentorship, and these are not done by seminary graduates. These are done by everyone, every Christian, uh, uh, farmer, business people, anyone can do this. And this guy uh, says that mentoring, biblical mentorship, is a relationship experience through which one person empowers another by sharing God-given resources. One person empowers another. And when he talked about God-given resources, he was talking about uh, um, wisdom, experiences, your obediences, your patterns of, uh, of spiritual life, that uh, encouragement, uh, opportunities that you can use to pour out or to share with someone else so they can also learn from that and reach their full potential in the kingdom of God. So based on this, anyone can do this. Not everyone can stand before the last crowd to preach or to teach, but I think everyone can meet someone else and share your life, share your experience uh, with them. Uh, so why do we do that? There are many reasons, but let me mention some. Number one is we are encouraged to do that because we follow biblical pattern of discipleship. If we look at the Bible, this is how God built his kingdom. This is how God develops his people. 
to serve in his kingdom. We read in the New Testament, uh, Joshua was given Moses, you say, to prepare him to be a leader of the people of Israel later on when Moses was promoted to heaven. Joshua led the people into the promised land. But for many years, he was mentored by Moses. And in the New Testament, we read, uh, Jesus mentored his disciples for three and a half years uh, to prepare them to work uh, beyond uh, uh, Palestine to reach out the world for the kingdom. Uh, And then we read about uh, Paul. Barnabas was sent to mentor Paul uh, to prepare him for the works that he, uh, he did. He wrote half of the New Testament. And later on, Paul realizing that he has benefited a lot from Barnabas, then he poured out his life to mentor many other young people as well, including Timothy, Titus, and Silas, and many other. And if we read the uh, book of Acts, uh, he parted away with Barnabas in chapter 15, and chapter 16, he began to mentor uh, Timothy and uh, so on. So uh, God has given us gifts and talents, uh, resources inside of us, but then we need someone else to help us along the way to grow. I miss lots of years of really having someone who pour out their life into me. And if you think that, oh, I haven't had a mentor for a long time, uh, you are not alone. Uh, there are many people with and not, that is uh, not too late. There is no eight limits for having a mentor. Uh, my mentor is now in his 60s, and he has another mentor who is in his 80s. I don't know if the 80s one has another mentor, or maybe if someone lives over a uh, hundred years. But in whatever age you are now, you need a mentor, and you learn to be a mentor of someone, because that is the way uh, we see in the Bible. Also, for the spiritual growth, uh, we know that spiritual growth is not a solo journey. Uh, it's not you making your effort yourselves, but it takes a community. A frequent uh, proverb says it's, it takes a community, a, a phyllis to raise a child. Uh, it takes a community, it takes someone else to come alongside and help us to grow in our spiritual life. Another reason is uh, we need model in life and in the ministry. We all know that Jesus is the perfect example. We read the gospel, we know that. But that was 2,000 years ago. Are there anyone who exemplifying living the type of life that I can try to learn from? So uh, we know Jesus, but we need to know someone else who lives inside the church so I know that, that model the life that I would like to be in my life, in my marriage, in my works. And ministry later on, we talk about that uh, as well. And we need encouragement and wisdom and many other things in our lives. Uh, Hebrews 10.24 says that we need to spur one another. We need to encourage uh, one another. And a mentor is used by God in our lives to provide us with wisdom, encouragement. And in fact, in the Christian ministry, uh, uh, mentoring is called Barnabas principle. We call it Barnabas because Barnabas shows a good example of mentoring. And his name means the son of encouragement. So it's to encourage uh, people uh, to do that. William Hendrickson, a a great Bible teacher, uh, uh, writes something like this. Whenever you turn today, you will find people looking for a guide, a coach, a model, an advisor. They're looking for someone who knows about life. In a sense, they're looking for a mentor. Now with the digital aid, uh, probably uh, our children have access to many things, to many people, many celebrities, and uh, we need to think whether these people can be the mentors in their lives because they watch, they spend lots of time uh, uh, watching this and listening to this. And uh, 
uh, we need to be able to have them and have all of us to find a good mentor in our Christian journey. Now, the, the questions will be, well, we need a mentor. We need to be a mentor. How can I find a good mentor? Now, this is not a comprehensive uh, list. I was thinking this as I prepare, maybe to make you uh, as easy to remember. Uh, just make the poll, uh, word mentor a, an acronym. And you can think about that. Uh, mentor, M-E-N-T-O. And are uh, so. Uh, otherwise, most of people they leave church after lunch. They forget the sermon. They might still talk about sermon during lunch, and after that, you are busy. So the next time you think about mentor, you think this: maturity. You want to find someone who is mature uh, spiritually, who bears the fruits of the spirit in the lives: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Self-control. No one is perfectly bearing that, but uh, you want to find someone who is spiritually mature to mentor you. Secondly, someone who shows a good example in the areas that you want to grow. And that way you can have multiple mentors. Depends on which area you want to grow. For example, if you're a businessman and you want to find how a good Christian businessmen run their business in Indonesia, which is very easy to do business with clean way. Or the other way around, you want to learn from them. You go to them and uh, ask them, I want to learn from you. Or in the areas of counseling, in the areas of teaching, in the many areas that you need, you lack and you want to find a mentor, you find a good example where you can come to and learn uh, uh, from them. N is nice now. I try to find what should be the N for. Uh, this is the challenges when you want to uh, use an acronym. What I mean with this is find people that you can get along with well. You have, people call it, you have a chemistry where you can sit down and talk for seven hours and you are energized with that. You feel that you learn a lot or you can mutually uh, benefit. Uh, I have friends that we can sit down and talk for seven hours. We enjoy that. Uh, from meeting, okay, just meet for two hours for coffee, and we ended up until 3 or 4 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. Uh, these kinds of people you can, uh, you, you can benefit. Some people, they are good, they are spiritually mature, but you meet after 15, hour, 15 minutes, you think, I have another appointment. Can I go now? Okay, and maybe that is not the best uh, mental uh, for you. Trustworthy, of course, you want to uh, learn from someone who is trustworthy, or, or who promised that let's meet this time, they really fulfill the, the appointment, they come, they want to honor that. Uh, people, you can hold on to the words uh, who demonstrate that in their lives. And O is older, older in faith and older probably in age as well especially in this part of the world. Uh, it is connected to maturity. Uh, those who come to the Lord first, you probably are young believers. This is what Paul did to Timothy. That's why he calls Timothy my son, uh, uh, my dear son. Also older in age probably. In other parts of the world, younger people, believers can mentor uh, older people in age. But I don't think that happens in Asia, in this part. Uh, later I will share. I just had some friends yesterday. They are here probably. It's very difficult to uh, share the gospel with your parents uh, because you are, it is just impolite in certain culture. Uh, ready. Uh, ready uh, means people who are available. Who they are available. They are available in the time, the resources, uh, giving you advice, and they are willing to invest their lives in you, which is not easy. Uh, those who are able to see the potential that God has put inside of you, uh, and then they are willing to come alongside of you 
and they want to uh, do that uh, for you. My mentor that I mentioned earlier, uh, sometimes he flew uh, from uh, Perth. If he's flying to the U.S., sometimes he made a stop in Jakarta and said, I'm, I'm hopping out of the plane. Uh, please come and we have this uh, mentorship. And then after that, he will hop into the plane uh, uh, and flow again. So you make that sacrifice uh, to pray together to invest. So uh, uh, those who are ready in the time, the resources, the wisdom to invest uh, in you. Maybe you can have other, other, uh, other criteria as well. Those who are mentoring, those who are old enough to mentor, you think, how can I find a Timothy? Younger in faith and in age. Find someone who is younger than you. Uh, in age as well, or probably in faith. Uh, that's why, once again, Paul calls Timothy my son in faith. Um, those who are sincere, you know that they really want to grow in their spiritual life. They're really looking for a mentor. And they come to you, and you know they're sincere. Paul talks about Timothy, he says, you are sincere in your faith. Have good reputations. Uh, when Paul came to Iconium, he heard that everyone spoke well about Timothy. And he recruited Timothy and mentored uh, Timothy. Of course, in discipleship, you want also to help so-called God-haters and help them in their journey. But in empowering certain people, it is good also to uh, have that in mind. Last one in this list is Humility. Humility means those who are teachable, those who are eager to learn, those who are humble enough to be rebuked, to be warned, uh, those who are humble enough to learn. Otherwise, the mentorship session will turn into debate and fight because you disagree and you fight and so forth. So humility is important. If you want to be mentored by someone, Make sure that you have that heart of teachable and hearts of uh, eager to learn. And now let's move to how did Paul do that to Timothy and to other people as well. For those who have been doing mentoring, maybe this is not new for you. Uh, if you are here that you want to do it first, uh, hopefully, this can be a, a helpful list for you. Uh, number one is build a close relationship with the people you mentor. Paul says to Timothy, my dear son. It is a family language that spoke something about very close relationship that he has with Timothy. Uh, nowadays, how you build a close relationship? By time spent together. Time is precious for many, so if you want to mentor someone, make sure that you will have uh, enough time. You can meet every week, you can meet every month. For some people, uh, some people maybe because you work closer to each other, you can have a meeting a few times a week. But uh, to build a closer relationship, you all know that you have to spend time uh, together. Paul spent lots of time with Timothy during the mission uh, uh, journey, missionary journeys. Pray for them regularly. Paul says in verse 3, I constantly pray for you every day, even day and night. Now, if you don't do that, I just put here, pray regularly for the one you mentor. Uh, ask if there anything you can pray for, their families, their works. Uh, if there are certain issues, you can ask and pray for them uh, regularly. I often uh, receive questions from my mentors. Anything we can pray for you, then they, we can share that and uh, pray for them. Affirm them of their faith. Verse 4 to 5. Paul says that I know your sincere faith. Uh, that is, the faith you have that is given, coming down through you from your grandma and from your mother. Uh, so Paul affirmed his faith. 
Paul affirmed Timothy, uh, encouraged him in his faith, in his progress. Uh, nowadays, we live in the age where people like to criticize. It's very easy to criticize. You go online, politicians criticizing each other. Everywhere it is criticism. And we need to be a voice of affirming people. Genuinely, it is not flattering. Genuinely, if you see any progress, any good things they make in their lives, Paul tried to see Timothy from this, and he affirmed. Can you imagine Timothy reading this letter from Paul? He was very encouraged. He was at the time as a young man, maybe not young anymore, in Ephesus, reading this letter. He was very encouraged. Uh, by that. Find things in people you mentor and try to, uh, to affirm them. Motivate them to use their gifts. In verse uh, 6, Paul encouraged him, put the flame of your gifts. Use them. The gift that you receive through the laying, in, laying on of my hands. This is probably a very important one uh, in relation to the topic today. Uh, this is probably going back to what Paul received from Barnabas. You remember we had the sermon uh, many weeks ago from uh, Mike. Uh, that's the reason why we start this mini series on uh, the art of men- mentorship, because Barnabas, when he was sent to the church in Antioch, Instead of going directly to Antioch, he went all the way to Tarsus to find uh, Paul and ask Paul to come with him to teach, to minister to the church in Antioch. Tarsus is further away from Jerusalem compared to Antioch. It is a sacrifice. Why? Because I believe Barnabas could see something in Paul that probably other people didn't see because other people were still afraid of him. Uh, And I I keep asking these questions. Why suddenly Paul going back to his kampung, his his village? He was there uh, instead of going around preaching. Maybe maybe he was discouraged at the time because not everyone accepting uh, him into the new circle because he used to persecute church. But Barnabas could see that and he went all the way, invite uh, Paul, gave him opportunity to minister together in Antioch. And later on, even they went on mission trip together, and even Paul became his leader later. Because in the, in the, you read Acts 13 until 14, the order was Barnabas and Saul, Barnabas and Saul. Later on, it changed. Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas. Because Barnabas at one point realized that this guy is amazing. He has lots of talents. He's a gift of leadership. I'm willing to serve under his leadership. This is what the mentor also can do. Uh, I could see that happening with John that I mentioned earlier. We traveled together, giving lots of uh, uh, seminar and teaching to local pastors. In the beginning, he will do like 80%. And then uh, I do uh, uh, 80, uh, 20, and then go down to 70, 50. And oftentimes I will do 70%, he will do 30%. And uh, at one point he said, yeah, you just come to my church in Perth and minister to our church for one whole week. I didn't expect that. He gave opportunity. He invited me to conferences and to connect with people that was very instrumental in starting uh, the work that we have been doing. He connects with people, he provides opportunities, and uh, like that. I could see, like Brother Mike here, I often uh, told him, you are are gifted with connecting people. Whenever he meets, hey, why don't we meet for lunch? And then you know this one, this one. So it's one of the ways uh, you can do to uh, the people, because you don't have everything, but you can connect people. That's what Barnabas did too. And now Timothy. When Paul met Timothy, he was a young boy in Iconium. He was a nice guy, he was well spoken of, but he would have to stay in the one place for the rest of his life. Thank God, God brought 
Paul into his life, took him on the ministries, and he was introduced to many people. And later on, he became leaders of many churches and many, in many places. He benefits. He also shared that with, uh, with others. Encourage them to grow in the areas that they need to. In verse 8, we read that Paul says, uh, God doesn't give us the spirit of timidity, but of power and, uh, and discipline. Many commentaries say that probably Timothy was suffering like uh, quite a shame. He was, uh, was living in timidity. Maybe he felt I was, I was young, I probably I'm not well educated. Uh, how can I serve in this the city of Ephesus, the largest city of uh, Roman uh, province in Asia? Uh, I'm only from Iconium. But he, uh, Paul gave him opportunity and encouraged him. Uh, don't be ashamed. Uh, and, and help them to grow in the areas that they, they need to grow. Uh, 10 or something years ago, we are having difficult times in my family because we are all too busy. Wife and husband were busy and sometimes we had strained relationship. And then we met with this mentor and he asked, how, many, how much time you spend together as husband and wife? Very little. He said, now I tell you, please spend one day a week just for both of you. If you don't do that, I don't want to meet with you. It's quite strong. I don't want to meet you until you let me know that you have done that. So these are the areas probably that a mentor can speak uh, with boldness into you. And when he meets, he will say, oh, you are doing good in teaching, but you are, you are terrible in administration and management. So if you want to do something, please someone have someone else have someone who can help you in that area. So someone who can know the areas of weakness and encourage you uh, to grow in them. Be a model uh, for them. Paul says to Timothy, join me in suffering as I am suffering now because of this couple. You have seen me suffering. I am now in prison. I invite you to do the same. Do not be ashamed of that. Be a model. Probably this is uh, very hard, but as we do that, we both grow because we learn, want to be a model for the people we mentor. That's, that's why we learn to grow with that, to serve others. I still remember vividly uh, we were doing, we spent time together in the, the remote areas in Papua. Uh, uh, we sleep in the village, in the different uh, small houses. Early in the morning, uh, this man, uh, big pastor, he made coffee and came and knocked my door at 5.30 and said, this is coffee for you. It's coffee for you. So I learned this. He uh, invited me into his house and he intentionally saw me. Every day he cooked for his wife. I said, probably this is a little bit harder for me to do that. Uh, Wadi doesn't allow me to cook for 20 years of our marriage, but now because of what happens, now I cook for her. Uh, so uh, do through circumstances uh, that can uh, uh, happen. Be accountable uh, to one another. Uh, Paul, uh, if, we, if we read this letter, Paul also open, opens his heart his struggles to Timothy, his frustrations, people that left her, is open. And then he wants Timothy also to be open. And he warned Timothy, watch out your life and your doctrine. Uh, assess the life. And nowadays it's quite scary for people to have someone looking into your life and hold you accountable. But uh, this is probably the way uh, the Bible says us to grow when we know that someone is watching over us 
here on earth. Of course, God knows, but uh, as I want to do that. These are some of the things that we can learn from this passage. Of course, there are many other things uh, we can learn. Hopefully, this will help you to study further, especially for Paul and Timothy. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy uh, will be good books for you to uh, read and study. Until here, you can see it's very nice. It's uh, very romantic, very uh, wonderful. But we will see that there are challenges and setbacks in Paul's life in uh, doing uh, mentorship. Now, before we come to Timothy, we experienced it, disagreements and probably conflicts. And we know that happens between Barnabas and Paul in Acts 15, 31 to 40. You can read 31 to 36. After they did together the first missionary journey, they came back to uh, Antioch, and now Paul says, let's, let's go back to see the churches that we have planted. And uh, Barnabas said, let's bring John Mark with us. Uh, John Mark is the cousin of Barnabas. But John Mark was joining them in the first trip. He left midway. And Paul says, I don't want to bring this man. Okay? He, he was not faithful. I don't want. Barnabas said, yes, give him. I can imagine that their conversation. Give him another chance. Let's take him. Maybe he can change. No way. He failed once, and he will be forever doing that. Uh, to the point that they had to separate. And I was taught a long time ago that one of the ways when you have conflict in the church, if you disagree with the church, one, you have to submit anyway. Secondly, yeah, you might separate ways. Uh, okay, I disagree. Maybe we separate for a while. Let's pray together. So they went separate ways. I thought Paul was immature at the time for me because he was just in Paul, probably he was impatient. He was on fire to do things, but he was not good yet in really mentoring uh, someone. Because we found out later that actually Paul benefited a lot from the life of John Mark that he criticized in the, in the past. Uh, <clears throat> He said this in 1 uh, Timothy 2.11, uh, Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Now he acknowledged that John Mark is very helpful to me. And in uh, Colossians 4.10, Paul says, My fellow prisoners Aristarchus sends you his greetings, as does Mark the cousin of Barnabas. So somehow Barnabas was successful in being patient to John Mark until he later on became very useful even to Paul. So Paul was immature. Barnabas, a good mentor, remains faithful to, uh, uh, to Mark. Uh, so if you face someone that make little progress in their lives, maybe you can learn from Barnabas to be faithful, uh, to give them second chance, third chance, and, uh, and uh, so forth. I still remember in my mentorship life, uh, I remember, I tried to think, uh, have we ever had a conflict in this? I remember once we did we travel together to a, a, a West Sulawesi, there's a small town called Mamuju. We went hours into the remote areas in the midst of plantations. And then we did help local pastors, and then on the way back to the airport, I promised one young man I used to mentor in Jakarta, he's now living there and doing work there, to visit him. So nearby the airport said, can we go and visit this man? And uh, this man said, no, I don't want that. I'm tired. Let's go directly to the airport. I said, I promise him. I feel... The Enoch uh, feels uncomfortable uh, if not to face it. So, because I'm driving, I'm the boss. So, uh, I just uh, drove all the way <laughs> to the pastor's house, and he didn't want to get out from the car. Okay. That is something to show that we all on the journey, 
<laughs> and I was so disappointed. I said, please, come on, we just meet this. Now I'm so tired, you just go and meet. On the plane back to Makassar and so we didn't talk to each other. <laughs> I thought the mentorship will end here because of this disagreement or so. But praise the Lord, it continued uh, later on. We both came and said probably we were too tired and so forth. You, m- you might have this in, uh, in your mentorship as well. Failures, disloyal, desertion, this is what Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.15. Uh, you know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including uh, Figulus and Hermogenes. No much information is uh, made available about these two persons. But this must be also people that Paul mentor. And when he needed them, they deserted him. And not only this, in uh, chapter 4, verse 10, he says about Demas. For Demas, because he loved this world, he deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. In Colossians, he still mentioned Demas very good. He still recommended Demas. But later on, Demas also left. Uh, just imagine Paul helping these people, mentoring them, discipling them, doing ministry together. And one day he needs them, and they are not there. They deserve it. And even they love the Lord and love it. And this could happen in our journey of mentorship. You are mentoring a young couple, pour your time and resources, they ended up divorced. That happens, probably. It's very disappointing. Or have moral failures, or they don't want to listen to anymore. This could happen. And that's why what Paul did was he focused on Timothy and Silas and others who are faithful. These people disappoint me, but if I look at you, your faith, your uh, life, I'm so encouraged by that. We don't want to end the sermon with this very low tone and you will leaving this place frustrated and decided, no, I'm not going to do this because this is uh, very hard. So let's end with the fruits and joys of uh, doing uh, this. Also from verse uh, 16 to 18, uh, Paul says about the family, uh, uh, Onesiphorus, household of Onesiphorus, they probably live in Ephesus. And when this family traveled to Rome, when Paul uh, was uh, currently uh, staying, they search for him. They tried to find him because they were blessed by the works of Paul when they were still in Ephesus. And Paul was so encouraged by that. You know someone is trying hard to find you. Where are you? I want to find you. And this is very encouraging. Uh, these are some of the things from, from the Bible that we can think of the joys of doing mentorship is seeing the growth and impact, impact in their lives. If you see people you mentor grow up and then they begin to use their talents and gift to, to bless others, their works uh, broadens, that is very encouraging for you. Like parents to see the children grow up and be successful in life. As parents, you, you'll be very happy. Also, you are very happy to see your, uh, your people, you mentor, you disciple, grow in their faith. Even they do even more than that. Uh, when we started the work we have been doing, I thought that if we could find young people who are willing to go in and out in the community of Damside, I'd be very happy to see that. There is people who are willing to go there. But what? One day, a couple of young men came to me and said, we want to go in and live with these people. So they literally went in and lived with the pickers. That was beyond I personally could ever imagine. You could see people that you mentor do things even beyond you. They can achieve more. And you'll be very grateful uh, uh, for that. Uh, 
our job, I was always reminded by this mentor that train people and release them. Mentor people and release them. Do not control people all the time. Do not control. Do not contain them when they have gifts, and talents, and opportunity. Release them. Encourage them so they can do more uh, in the spiritual life in the kingdom. Spiritual growth for mentors as well. Because as you mentor people, you also learn to watch your own life. You pray for them. And you grow as well in, in your spiritual life. Mutual encouragement. As we have read uh, early this week on Wednesday, I gave him a call. Can I call you? I just want to thank you for mentoring me. I could say for any other elders here, but just thank you for mentoring me. Because this Sunday I'm going to talk about this as well, but I've seen a lot of blessings in my life of it. And he was very encouraged by that. It's good for your mentor also to know, to say to them that thank you uh, for mentoring me. Thank you for uh, helping me and my life. And at the end, we don't want to have a selfish reason, but the kingdom of God grows because of that through the multiplication of leaders. Second Timothy 2.2, 2. you mentor people who is able to mentor others, who is able to mentor others, the multiplication of that. Can you imagine that each one of us here goes out and mentors someone for the next one year or two years? Then we double uh, people who are mentored. And the kingdom grows, more people reach, more people touch. Uh, by the gospel. That is probably the most important thing. God will be uh, glorified in all that we do. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for teaching us from the scripture today about mentorship, discipleship, if we are here, we have been mentoring others, we have been discipling others. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to encourage, to supply wisdom and uh, encouragement uh, to continue to do this. Uh, we pray that if we haven't done so, this word will challenge us to pray for a Paul for us, to pray for a Timothy for us, where all the resources that you have given to us, we can use that to, uh, imp to pour out into the lives of others. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. <clears throat>